You're listening to WSTU Stewart. This is WPSL Fort St. Lucie. It's 608 at WPSL 1590, the talk of the Treasure Coast, and you're on Small Biz Florida with Tom Kendrick. Thank you, sir, and welcome to another segment and installment of Small Biz Florida, the podcast and broadcast that's all things business across the Treasure Coast and the entire state of Florida. Small Biz Florida is brought to you by the Florida Small Business Development Center Network and is produced by the Florida SBDC right here at Indian River State College. Small Biz Florida is designed and produced to highlight and promote a business assistance resources, celebrate entrepreneurial success, present best practices, and most importantly, provide timely business information for Florida's small business owners and operators. I am Tom Kindred, and I serve as the regional director for the Florida SBDC at IRSC. I also have the the bumps and bruises of uh, 25 years of small business ownership. So for me, the mission of this program is simple and clear. Make sure that all of our small business owners are aware of the powerful business assistance programs available to help them start, grow, and succeed. And more bumps and bruises from this show. That's right. Five years, according to you. It's going to be six in January, <laughs> you jerky. <laughs> Greg, you I think you count uh, broadcasting in dog years hey, or something. go back to YouTube. You'll find them all. <laughs> <laughs> no way we've been doing this six years. Oh. No way. Oh, boy. Good Lord. Yep. Well, what, is, what, what month are we? Is this September or October? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that, isn't that true? There's no way yeah. that next week is Christmas. There's just no way. No, I know. It's... It's crazy. I, you know, Greg, I gotta. I want to give you a heads up. I do not have a Christmas Eve uh, extravaganza show planned yet, but I'm working on it. Some something big for Christmas Eve. Are we going to be open Christmas Eve? <laughs> I don't know. I think we have a bowl game or something. Oh God, we're going to get preempted by a bowl game. You probably find, are. Yeah. Find that hard to believe, Greg. Yeah, it's a pool on weed eater bowl or something. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh about that. I had to cover right. that in, in in Louisiana. Yeah. yeah. So so you're telling me that we may be off the air for a couple of Thursday nights. We may not make Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve, huh? Well, you make weekends and daytime. Okay. So you're All good. right. I'll take it. Hey, uh, just a little bit of small news. I don't know if you've heard coming out of IRSC. Anybody hear the small news, just small announcement? What's going on? Oh, I saw it on Nowhere News. Um, yes, yeah, yeah. Indian River State College receives transformative gift from philanthropist Mackenzie Scott. Small, just a small donation. $45 million donation Woo-hoo! is the single largest in college history. On the uh, day of their 2020 commencement ceremony, Indian River State College announced that it had received the largest single donation in its 60-year history uh, from philanthropist Mackenzie Scott. I guess of those of you who know Mackenzie Scott, that is uh, the former uh, wife of Jeff Bezos. I was told today that she is the 18th wealthiest I, I think, think it's 17. Is it 17? Yeah. <clears throat> not bad. <laughs> no, not bad. Uh, 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 Dr. Timothy Moore, uh, especially grateful for Ms. Scott's generosity and her confidence in IRSC's critical mission. Uh, the magnitude of this gift will positively transform lives for generations of IRSC students. It accelerates the ability of the college to redefine and reframe the narrative on how American community colleges can better serve all of their constituencies. Uh, IRSC was among 384 organizations selected after Scott's team of advisors considered some 6,500 organizations. 
along with data analysis on community needs, program outcomes, and each nonprofit's capacity to absorb and make effective use of the funding. Uh, the announcement was made yesterday on Scott's blog. Donations were focused on those operating in communities facing high projected food insecurity, high measures of inequality, local poverty rates, and low access to uh, philanthropic capital. Again, I think this, uh, you know, I think it's amazing beyond all things. I think it speaks volumes about Indian River State College. I think it's it, it speaks volumes about our ability to 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 manage to to uh, to manage the college, manage operations. And I think it speaks volumes about uh, an organization like McKinsey Scott's organization, the confidence they have in Indian River State College. Um, to put these dollars to good use. So I, again, I just there's I think there's all kinds of positives going to come out of that. My goal is to get her on for one of the halftime shows. That would be great. Hey, I like that idea, yeah. Greg. Hey, Let's get Mackenzie Scott on the show. On this show, that's what I'm saying. Oh, hey, that's even better. <laughs> She's got nothing better to do, right? Yeah. Hey, I mean, hey <laughs> what sure. the hell? Sure. I like that. She could deliver the check to you. Well, now, wait a minute. Uh, yeah, Folks yeah, in the foundation right. won't no, like I'm that. I'm sure oh. Ann Decker's probably, she wouldn't want me around that yet. <laughs> sure, I'm not going to be allowed within oh, man. 100 no, yards. Yeah, no kidding. All right. Uh, so, anyway, big, big news. And, again, I think it just speaks volumes about the college. I think it, you know, again, uh, 6,500 organizations they reviewed. That's what's amazing to yeah, me. Yeah, I mean, we, we made the cut on 6,500 organizations. Well, that um, sounds just like the award that we got the last, yeah, last, last year. Award. You know, it, it's the yeah. same, similar type thing. Yeah, yeah it's good stuff. I'm yeah. telling you, it's a good place. And, and uh, you know, I, I, like I said, and I uh, happened to had a quick conversation with Dr. Moore um, recently. And, and, again, I he is so committed to, uh, to making sure that people understand the resource of the college along the Treasure Coast and, and uh, making sure that, that everyone that uh, that wants to take advantage of it can. So it's um, I don't think it could have happened to a, certainly a better organization, or or I don't think it could have been put in the hands of a better a better president than, than Dr. Moore. I think he'll he'll know exactly uh, how to make best use of those dollars. So. Can't wait to uh, get him on the air. It, it should yes, be fun. we well we I think um, uh, we're on his list. Uh, I, I you know. Uh, he's um, he told me that uh, that that he is coming on the show uh, beginning of the new year. So is that before or after Dr. Phil? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're gonna. That's oh, right. Um, so anyway, it's kind of uh, our show tonight. I I uh, was talking to Katie Muldoon, our producer, the other day, and I said, you know what I want to do? I want to do a year in review. Uh, I want to kind of talk about where we've been this year because let me tell you, it's been a long, long, long year. Yeah, it <laughs> has. And um, so I did want to spend just a little bit of time this evening talking about where we've been and what we've done. And um, so I've got with me uh, the best people to help me do that. We've got our very good friend and uh, coordinator for the um, – CCTI program at Indian River State College, Mr. Bob O'Brien. Bob, welcome to the show. Thank you, Tom. It's always nice to have Bob. I, uh, of course, as I have, everyone has heard me talk through the years, CCTI is just an incredible program, and I used to refer to it as one of the best kept secrets, but it's not anymore. Um, since, uh, since we started uh, Small Biz Florida 35 years ago, <laughs> just seems that way it just seems that way <laughs> we um bob has been on with us many many times so i can tell you that uh, bob your exposure in the community is off the chart now thanks to small biz florida i can't hide anymore huh? no you listen you're gonna have to you're gonna have to answer the phone and and book those trainings and um so that's not a anyway, problem it's uh it, Bob it, will be hand, <laughs> handing out his 8x10s. <laughs> uh, they are autographed. Right. But Bob, uh, Bob and the team at SBDC, Connie Gifford, uh, 
Susie Klein, uh, Joe Gorham. I, I really, again, it just it, it's they're a great group of people. They they've been engaged in this uh, corporate training space a long time. They got good experience, uh, and, and you know, our gosh, I could go on fill the whole hour with the pool of instructors that Bob has. Gosh, you know, just I hate to even rattle off any names because I'll forget names. But God, you Deborah Williams. Tom Epsky, Leanna Haig, um, Patrick Arsiman, Patrick Arsiman. Bob, we're missing the, the other young lady that teaches for Michelle. Michelle Frazier. Michelle Frazier. Bob Gibson's been with us. Bob for Gibson, a yeah. Long time doing our computer classes. Oh God, the, the photography instructors. Howard Stickler. Oh yes, yeah. And, yeah. And Denise, they uh, they've been doing it a long time and. <clears throat> those classes are still very, very popular. Uh, and, uh, they re- those, those photography class people just, they love them. It's yeah. incredible. And they've got three levels, and a beginner, an intermediate, and advanced photography. Yeah. I mean, they really become like, it's, they're like a family, you know, like a cohort when they, when they go to those photography class. People, they, they still correspond, and they participate in photography, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, competitions and really it's an incredible class if so. you go to the website and you can you can click on we have a link that shows uh, photographs done by the students from the class yeah. and they're just it's absolutely incredible some yeah. of the pictures now you know part of that is technology but uh, as they say in the class the camera doesn't take the picture mm-hmm. the person does so uh some really cool stuff there I, so I've uh, been I really would love to take the class I've got to figure out how i can do that maybe they could teach one from midnight till three (laughs) in the morning i could fit that in uh we've also got with us to talk a little sbdc and also a standout instructor for ccti got our very good friend clifton vaughn um clifton and i met a number of years ago clifton um did consulting work uh years ago uh i shouldn't say years ago it hadn't been that long ago but you did consulting work with score um clifton is a is an accountant by trade and so we we got to know each other and i said hey uh clifton you should be teaching for the ccti and uh he did he came on board as an instructor and now clifton is actually uh, with the sbdc as one of our cares act consultants so we were able to get clifton engaged on a little more regular basis and we're happy to have him as part of the team clifton's done a great job with us reaching out to to businesses who are struggling with this uh, pandemic issue. And so we're going to talk just a little bit about that and maybe a little bit about his uh, experience is, uh, in instructing for the CCTI. So, Clifton, welcome to the show. Thank you, uh, Tom, for having me. Yes, sir. Uh, so let me, we're gonna get, let me get started. Just I want to just cover a couple of quick numbers. Uh, we'll, we'll go through a couple of SBDC numbers, and I've, then I've asked Bob to kind of I want him to give us a little few highlights from uh, training, but <clears throat> there's a few data points that we like to collect and we like to, to uh, kind of monitor at the SBDC. Consulting hours is one of those. Clifton knows that, um, that that's one of the driving points for us. So we're still gonna, we're still posting numbers. I'm sure Clifton, I'm sure you're still posting your numbers, but, yes, sir. but, um, but through, so far through 2020, uh, your SBDC at IRSC has provided uh, probably about 5,500 plus uh, hours in consulting uh, across the Treasure Coast. We've helped our um, we've helped our clients get access to about I think when it's all said and done, probably around 13, 14 million dollars in capital. Uh, very impressive number. Uh, in the government contracting area um, under the leadership and direction of Scotty Wilson, our government contracting specialist, our PTAC specialist. Uh, Scotty has helped his clients get access to, you ready? $86 million in government contracting. What? So when we talk about, and Clifton knows, when we talk about government contracting being a a channel for a business to increase their revenues. <laughs> there it is. There it is. I mean, it, eighty-six million dollars. I did hear you correctly then. Yes, you did. Not eight point six. Eighty-six. 
Wow. No point just there. south of 90. Yeah. <laughs> just, just a hair, and I'll bet I you. I can tell he's an accountant. And no, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and knowing Scotty, who knows what he'll post tonight. So. Um, wow. That's amazing. We kind of started the year on Tuesday, March the 17th. The governor declared the emergency for the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Um, so we are the primary point of contact for the Florida Small Business Emergency Bridge Loan. Uh, we began uh, pretty quickly processing loans. We processed about 95, uh, got 74 of those funded before the funds were exhausted. Uh, that allowed us to put about three million one hundred and eighty five thousand dollars out in the community uh, since the funds uh, were exhausted with the emergency bridge loan the cares act money began to flow we've worked very closely with helene uh, and john up at the indian river county uh, chamber and the indian river county economic development organization uh, in helping them process indian river county small business grant program we have to date received about 229 applications we funded about 141 of those uh, that's about we're knocking on the door of eight hundred thousand dollars out in that community we're continuing to work those applications through the end of the year katie um, has been uh, has been leading a team of grant reviewers working very closely with st lucie county and pete tesh and his team at the edc we have received somewhere between 500 and 600 applications. Uh, we have processed to date. We have uh, pushed up 250 uh, to get funded, uh, which represents about $2 million that we've put out uh, mm -hmm. in St. Lucie County uh, in CARES Act money. Good stuff. So good. The numbers are good this year. Unfortunately, they're uh, they're good because uh, you know we got struggling businesses, so we're we're having to get out there and do what we can. Just a couple of things that um, a couple of very positive uh, initiatives that we kind of launched uh, this year, and they'll kind of you know we'll take them over into twenty one. But we were able uh, got a great partnership. Uh, with the city of Port St. Lucie. We've been working on that for a while, but we executed that partnership. It's a three-year partnership. They're going to help, the uh, city of Port St. Lucie is going to help our center fund a full-time personnel uh, that will be focused on uh, Port St. Lucie small business community. Will uh, this be at the Pruitt Center? Yes, he'll be, he'll be positioned at the Pruitt Center. Cool, okay. He'll be focused on uh, city of Port St. Lucie um, businesses. Uh, we're going to probably bring a new team member in to the SBDC next year. We're going to bring a capital access specialist. We hope to bring that person in and um, so that they have some, some uh, you know, good engagement and knowledge in helping folks get access to capital. It's going to be an important year to help us do that. Uh, got a great partnership with Center State Bank uh, where they have, um, they're going to scholarship people into our profit mastery training program. So I, I'm telling you, if you're listening and you're a small business owner, call us, write us, whatever you want to do. But we need to try to get you in that Profit Mastery Training Program. TD Bank, also another partnership with us. Uh, they gave us some funding uh, for the Profit Mastery uh, Training Program. And then uh, finally, our continued relationship with with Kevin Staten and Tammy Matthews and, and, um, and Doug uh at uh, bank of america just incredible program incredible support we get from bank of america uh they work with us on funding that ptac person that scotty wilson who helped those businesses get access to 86 million dollars wow. in government contracting so we really appreciate uh bank of america's help good going uh, b of a yeah. wow yep so again uh you know unfortunate year for small business but a productive year for the SBDC, and we can only got to thank people like Clifton uh, who are out there. Uh, boots, I like to say, uh, I like to say, uh, loafers on the on the sidewalk, uh, <laughs> working with small business owners and loafers. Operating. How what? old are you? <laughs> I'm telling you, what? loafers must have had a penny in there somewhere. I, well, I, I did. That's about all I had. Um, <laughs> And every now and again, I tried to take the penny out so I could get a piece of gum. Or I don't something, get it. So. I don't know what that means. No, no you're yeah, too you're young. young. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, 
so that's kind of the uh, the update and our year in review for the SBDC. Again, I can't thank uh, I can't thank our team enough. Um, the whole team, uh, Catherine, Katie, Mike Bernard, Emily McHugh, uh, Scotty Wilson, Spike Schulteis, and then let's see if I can get all these other ones right. Clifton Vaughn, John Coleman, who joined us on the show a couple weeks mm-hmm. ago. Um, Tom Epsky, Leanna Haig, uh, Linda Gonzalez. I think I'm missing somebody, but... By the way, did Katie graduate the oh, other yes. day? Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. She's, no. She has already graduated from IRSC. She's working, I think, now on her BS degree. Oh, okay. I was wondering um, if she walked the other day. Yeah. That's no, a- Marcus Koya and Brian Depolo. There you go. There you go. There you so go. There's, go. there's our CARES Act team of consultants that came on board with us. So we, I just thank everybody for, for all they've done for the small business community. And, and we're still working. Uh, college kind of their last day was today but that's not the last day for for the sbdc we're still working uh we're still pushing to try to get as much of this cares act money out into the hands of small business owners now your cares bunch is was i hearing correctly a couple weeks ago they're going to be working through 21 well i don't that i don't know oh my cares act the cares act consultants yes like Clifton Vaughn, yes, they will continue on. We have funding. I thought I heard that. Yeah, we have funding through 2021. And and again, I've all I've what I've said recently this last year is I think Congress, I think, you know, Who? say what you, I know. Con, I think <laughs> I think they really I think they at least at least one time they thought some things out. So when they created all when they granted all this CARES Act money under that first appropriation. Instead of just saying we're going to give money, I, they also said we can't just give the money. We've got to give some support. So they gave the SBDCs some CARES Act funding, which is what allowed us to bring on specialist and experienced folks like Clifton. And uh, so we, it just allowed us to put more, um, you know, more loafers on the sidewalk to, to go out there and, uh, and uh, wingtips. I mean, I should say wingtips on the road. Uh, to uh, to help small business owners how does how do the cares act funds for this area compare to other areas of florida I, you know what i i, I don't know uh, just too diverse probably well right? the bigger cities uh you know we are one of the smaller sbdc centers uh within the network in florida but the bigger cities like jacksonville tampa miami they got they got a huge chunk of change, and they got it much earlier than we did. We we didn't get ours at the same time. The bigger the bigger metropolitan areas got their money a, a number of months before we did. So I know that was the big difference was they got their money sooner than we did. But but once we got our money, all four counties across the Treasure Coast did somewhat the same thing with their money they broke it up amongst organizations and in all four of our counties dedicated a, a portion of those dollars to small business grants so i got to hand it to i, I guess i, I really sh- was uh, should should also really thank the, the political leadership uh the county commission uh in all four counties okeechobee indian river st Lucie, and martin I mean, to really have the vision and leadership to say, let's take some of these dollars. I don't think they had to do that. Uh, let's take some of these dollars and, and, and set up these grant programs. So, again, thank them, too. I mean, really good, good vision, uh, you know, great leadership to, to, to recognize that small business community. And, and we're just proud to be a small part of trying to get those dollars into the hands of, of the business owners. So that's the SBDC, Bob. Uh, I, you, you've got a long list, but you don't have a lot of time. So you give us the, just give us the. Well, we've got till midnight. Go for it. <laughs> yeah, another four Bob, hours. Treat this like a treat this like a halftime uh, baseball uh, critique. Uh, give there's us the no, high points of your of your 2020 CCTI uh, there, operations. There is no halftime in baseball, Tom. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> 
Craig, we've got to get him educated. Oh, good Lord. Oh. How did, did I just do that? You did. Yeah, you, hey, did. you did. Hey, Greg, did hit that button. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to edit this. <laughs> I, did, I did say halftime in baseball. Yes, right? you did. Wow. But that's okay. okay. Yeah. It would have been better, Tom, if you had gone to a major college. You mean like University of Miami or something like that? No, I was thinking UCLA or USC or something. Uh, okay, I may not speak the rest of this show now that I <laughs> said halftime in baseball. I know. I know. Okay, Bob, uh, give us <laughs> give us that give us the uh, highlights of the CCTI 2020. Several programs uh, have carried over that we've started here in the recent years. The business accelerator program uh, for small business owners to get training and possible grant money. It started years ago with on the Martin County side and working with the Business Development Board. We came up with a series of 10 classes. Uh, the, the small business owners would come one night a week from six to nine, and uh, we would give them some great topics that would help them run their small business. At the end of the BAP program, uh, the small business owners would do a pitch for a panel and tell us what uh, what they could use some grant money for. And the BDB has been uh, giving away $5,000 for each BAP class that we've done. And uh, we could give 5000 to one small business owner, or we can split that uh, money up. And uh, that's a great program. Been going for several years now in Martin County. And uh, it has now been duplicated and copied in St. Lucie County. And we'll be starting uh, one soon here in city of port st lucy specifically yeah. city of port st yep. lucy and then uh fort pierce uh downtown fort pierce we're going to be instituting a bat program there so those are always oh, cool. great That's and good. uh leadership academies we have uh we have bundled some great popular classes uh for the leadership teams and uh that several companies now have uh, decided to do our, our leadership academies, and uh, those were off and running well. And uh, Southern Eagle distri dis Distributing, A1 Roof and Trusses, Port St. Lucie Parks and Recreation, Piper Aircraft, City of Fort Pierce, uh, Indian River Property Appraisers are just a few that have uh, taken advantage of the supervisor uh, the leadership academies and the supervisor training. So that's a great program that the CCTI has developed over the years. Of course, the APWA, the American Public Works Association, where we do 30 hours of training in, in uh, three days. We do three 10-hour days, and these uh, public works employees come from all over the state. We do one here in Fort Pierce, and we do one on the west coast in uh, st pete and and that's been a popular program over the years and uh we do three modules of that so they end up getting 90 hours of supervisory training and uh, they come out of that with the ability to move up the ladder within the public works department and uh so it's all done through irsc even though it's on the west coast of florida right? yes uh susie klein cool. takes uh goes across across the state and sets up camp over there for three days and uh, we take the training to them, uh, saves them on uh, overnight expenses and travel. So we've got it covered on both, both uh, ends Tom, of the coast. So there we go. That's a show. Think, yeah. think about it. Three days in Siesta Key. Right. <laughs> huh? I like it. <laughs> so uh, those are good. We've also uh, this year came up with, uh, we partnered with Yamaha uh, and we've come up with an introduction to Marine technology program uh got a great young instructor there that uh two guys that get after it and and uh we're just helping some folks out there that are interested in doing a little bit of uh learning a little bit about the yamaha boat engine so anybody who uh, wants to learn about the engine and be able to do at, at the end of that class it's just an introductory level but at the end of that class they're able to do a i think it's called a 20 hour uh service on the yamaha boat engine so that's a popular one and, uh, of course... I mean, it is a good entry-level class to, sure. to get a job, too, in, in the yeah in, in the marine you know repair industry business. Sure. sure. And there's so much outboard business yeah. around here. Yeah. 
So uh, we were off to a good start at the beginning of the year, and then, uh, of course, COVID came, and everything shut down uh, middle of March and kind of brought things to a halt, so we had to redefine ourselves. So uh, we partnered, the CCTI partnered with the SBDC. We came up with a game plan where we could uh, utilize Zoom technology and uh, all the other outlets where we don't have to meet face-to-face and... uh, of course, those have taken over, and, and it's kind of interesting stuff, and we're probably going to change the way we do things uh, in our meetings and uh, the way we get together with our grandparents and stuff like that. So uh, we utilize Zoom and put together some um, some webinars that were some of our great topics that were adjusted due to the COVID pandemic and uh, came up with ways that we could help the small business change the way they were thinking changed the way they were doing business so they could reopen a- at the time and you know try to try to sustain their business through uh, different ways of and technology and just different ways to handle s- things so those webinars were one hour long we did a couple a week and uh, those were very successful and uh, so we're able to help the small business owners without being face to face but most people enjoy the face-to-face, yep. you know, classroom-type instruction. And uh, finally, I think it was May or, Ju- May or June, we were able to uh, – we, we went through the classrooms. We did our social distancing. We spread out all the tables and the chairs. And uh, we were able to start doing some face-to-face training again. And uh, we, we follow the CDC guidelines and, and do all the good stuff. So uh, people are – starting to come back yep. out out of their shells and, uh, and and you know utilizing some of our training so we're getting things going again and mm-hmm. uh, you know yeah you guys did great work this year in in having to you know like you said kind of having to adjust and, and reinvent how you did how you did trainings and it um, again like you, you say uh, Susie told me today she was I think she was running the the, the printer drive ink today uh, getting proposals out so I think people are Businesses are, are you know, kind of getting uh, next year uh, scheduled and looking at their calendars and, and planning for some trainings to, to, to crank up. So, it, again, you guys do a great job at CCTI, and I've, I'm always impressed with the offerings. And, and um, you know, anytime anybody goes through the classes, we just, you know, we get great, uh, great evaluations and, and great response. So we appreciate what you're doing in terms of corporate training, Bob. Thank you. Uh, Clifton, I want to turn to you uh, a little bit here um, and talk a little bit about what's going on. Kind of give us a little bit of the, maybe a little bit of the temperature of what's happening out there. You, again, you've been an instructor with CCTI. You teach a very unique class for us called the Ice House Entrepreneurship Program. Um, uh, but um, but first, kind of tell us a, a little bit of, just give us a little bit of background on you and your pathway real quickly to how it all got started with you at the college and, well, and working with CCTI. Well, okay, Tom. Um, I, I think I saw a nice application notice for a job, um, business analyst or something, and I put submitted my resume for that. And as uh, working with uh, the Indian River State College, it took a while. But, but after we got through the maze, <laughs> uh, uh, you brought me on. And then, and then you gave me a very, very unique assignment. You sent me over to the Okeechobee Correctional Institute. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it was quite a challenging uh, experience. But I went in. It was, a, it was a daunting episode. And I said, okay, let's go in there and let's put our best foot forward and let's show these people uh, what can what's waiting for them on the outside and I found out that there are some great students I also taught uh, at uh, 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 down in Miami at St. Thomas uh, University and I found out that these students in the prison were better students than the college students at St. Thomas wow. they were more dedicated well, you know, wow. they're pretty much preoccupied. I mean, right. nowhere else to go. <laughs> uh, but they put on a good show. And, and, and we put on a good, very good uh, program uh, of entrepreneur. Taught them how to recognize th- that inner entrepreneur within themselves and also to change that mindset that I can do it. 
I can get it done. I don't have to depend on somebody else to make me successful. I, I have the ability, it's all a decision, and I am in charge. And you know, uh, Clifton, I guess one of the things that, that makes that program important to, to those individuals who are incarcerated is so often they have difficulty getting jobs because of the record. So, you know, talk a little bit about, you know, that's what's so, you know, really kind of uh, ingenious about teaching them entrepreneurial skills because that may be the way they go to work when they come out is creating that job for themselves. Is that kind of the theory behind that? That's definitely a theory. And, and also uh, that Ice House program that you mentioned, one of the concepts there was is uh, there, there's a, 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 an assumption that you have to have money right. to get into business. Well, that's a myth. You do need to oh, have Oh, Tom some. and I know that. <laughs> 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 yeah. You do have to have some resources. But also, resources not always come in the form of dollars. Right. Resources come in the form of thinking you're, uh, you know, a new way to go, right. a new path to develop. Uh, if you see a pile of trash that needs to be moved, maybe there's a, a couple people on that block that need some trash moved. Right. And if you can get that trash, get it organized, and, and go and then obtain the customers, then you might end up with a thriving business. Right. No, it's a, a great concept. And, and Clifton, I had the opportunity after you taught a couple of cohorts and ran a couple of series of those classes over at the Okeechobee Correctional Institute to go to graduation where they received their certifications for completing mm -hmm. these courses. And I got to tell you, Clifton, they were, they were really appreciative of you and uh and impressed with you and uh and nothing but praise for you as an instructor uh for the skills they learned and, and so you know you really did you 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 did some transformational work uh over at oci so we we appreciate what you did over there right so you so you've t you've taught for ccti you've taught that very unique class in a very unique um right. setting um <laughs> Then now you're working with us as a CARES Act consultant, working with businesses. What are you seeing out there now with, with the small businesses that you've, you've worked with? I, I, you know, it's obvious that it's tough, but, uh, you know, what are you hearing from the, from the marketplace? I'm hearing that it is tough. And one of the things that uh, we're having to, I'm having to work with the business owners about is how to reimagine their business, how to come up with new ideas. <clears throat> And I tell them, you know, you, you really don't have a money problem, you have an idea problem. You have to develop new ideas and that's gonna bring the money in, okay? Yeah. So we have to sit down and we have to think about it. How are you gonna to relate to the customer? How are you gonna get out there and get it done? Yeah, that's an excellent point, Clifton. I mean, you, it really is time to rethink. And, and even in tough times like this, there are opportunities. There, you know, are you seeing some people that are that are shifting and rearranging yes. and rethinking their business and, and taking advantage of opportunities? Exactly. And, and also, I'm working with a particular uh, uh, client at the moment, and, and we're having to say, hey, look, you know, uh, the cupboards are bare, and you have, you know, they have a, a good facility. They own the land, free and clear. And I'm saying, perhaps maybe you might want to put that on the market and then take those resources and, and, and redirect the business. All right. And, and that is, you know, everyone was excited about that. I thought they were going to be a little slow to jump at that one, but they were eager and ready to go. Yeah, no, no. Well, this is also the time, you know, I've talked to a couple of businesses. I've, I've talked to someone today that, that kind of told the story of, you know, I'm trying to keep this going and I've, I've put this in and I've borrowed this and I've put this in and, you know, at some point, Maybe you do have to ask that tough question, you know, how much are we going to put in? Uh, you know, we get emotional about the business and, and uh, you know, I, I, we teach a concept in entrepreneurship called affordable loss. Uh, you've got to really kind of make a decision of how much are you going to put into this business. Are you seeing, just to your point about let's put the property up for sale and let's go a different direction? I mean, what, uh, I'm, what I'm also seeing, Tom, along those lines is, that people are so emotionally attached to right. the business. And we come in and we, we aren't as close. We right. aren't emotionally involved. Right. And then we can give them that assessment. 
Right. Gu- really guilty is charged. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I get right. that. I yeah. Get that. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. we yeah we can be well, and I think that a part of our responsibility is to be that. We 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 should be the ones that can have the candid conversation, um, you know, and and kind of kind of present those kinds of ideas, and and that's up to them to 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 act on them, but. But we can see it with a little clearer lens. Exactly. Um, yeah, and, and and it was well received uh, in the last session that I had with this client. All right, um, Bob. I'm only going to give you five minutes now. <laughs> That's all you get. Five minutes. Tell us what you got planned for 2021. Kind of give us what's coming up. Sure. We've got a few initiatives. Uh, again, we're trying to reevaluate some ways that we deliver training, and that. That ever popular APWA program, we are in the midst of making it uh, totally online. And a lot of work to put 90 hours of instruction, several different instructors, several topics. A lot of work to put that uh, on video and, uh, and get that out there. We're, but we're hoping that uh, this year we can uh, take that APWA, APWA program, make it uh, 100% online, and uh, be able to deliver it to to people all across the country, not just folks in the uh, public works departments here in Florida. So Okay, so this pandemic could be an opportunity for CCTI. Exactly. Sure. That's what you do. Okay, there you go. You yeah. take uh, adversity and you turn it into opportunity, just like on the ball field or on the basketball court, as you know, Greg. Yeah, mm-hmm. halftime uh, in baseball. <laughs> an- another, another interesting... Uh, Tom's never going to live that down. <laughs> yeah. Another interesting concept that we're working on is uh, we've been doing strategic planning. We've been doing uh, team building. We've been doing, you know, our training topics uh, where, you know, the client comes in, does their training and goes home and, and, uh, you know, maybe they come back the next week and do another one and so on and so forth. And uh, I'm currently working on a way to do some corporate retreats. Uh, and utilize some of the uh, some of the p- the popularity of our area. So uh, we're putting together a nice uh, retreat packages Ooh. where companies can come in and do their strategic planning in the morning. Uh, then we feed them a little lunch, and then we maybe take them a little deep sea fishing. And marketed by St. Lucie County Tourism. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or we take them out on one of the great golf courses in our area sure. and uh, let them play around the golf. Uh, we've... Uh, we're, we're looking at some hotels. We visited a great hotel, Hutchinson Island uh, Shores oh, yeah. Resort you out bet. on the beach. Chances, and, yeah. Uh, so that would kind of be a destination hotel you where uh, a company comes in from the Great White North, wants to do a little retreat, two or three days of training. Uh, we could put them up at a nice hotel right there on the beach, and we can deliver the training right there at the hotel, utilize the uh, the rooms there and so we'll take the training where we need to go as well and then some fun times there would be you know do a little deep sea fishing or or golf we're also talking to our friends out at westgate river ranch uh, to see if anybody wants to be countryfied and uh, go out there and do some uh, a day of team building or horseback riding and they've got a lot of great events out there as well so uh, we could provide the training portion of their day, and then uh, we'll take them and entertain them. And uh, we're going to go out and meet with, of course, the folks out at Quail Run. And uh, if any of them want to come in and do a little turkey hunting or do a little skeet shooting, uh, you know, we can train them during the day and then in the afternoon go let them have a little fun. And uh, so we're working on those that packages. Really seems neat. Yeah. Yeah. It could be a one day training package, could be two days, or hopefully a, a nice three day deal where they come in for a half day on the first day, do a full day uh, training and fun uh, on day two, and then some more training in the morning of day three, and then get them back home. So uh, that's a fun and exciting one that we're at trying to add to the uh, corporate and community training institute here at the college. So uh, am I out of time? You're close. <laughs> <laughs> Go of course quickly. We're, we're always <laughs> two more. We're always want to get to the one where uh, we can talk about uh, Clifton and Ice House, but go ahead. <laughs> the uh, 
of course, there's a lot of grants with the CARES Act going on and other. Uh, we're working on a rapid credentialing uh, grant that's out there where we are going to try to help people get uh, certifications here in uh, in 2021. So we're uh, there are some grant money that will help pay for that. So we're you know we've talked about. Uh, and opening up some some training opportunities where employees can get a certification that would make them more employable. Uh, now these programs are for the unemployed or the underemployed uh, or anybody that has been furloughed. So if you're out there and you've been laid off because of COVID and you're interested in, in trying to get a new certification and some new skills to get reemployed, uh, check in with us in January and uh, you know we're putting together a nice uh, package called rapid credentialing and uh, that training will be paid for by a grant so it'll be at no cost to the to the unemployed or underemployed person wonderful so yeah uh, that, that's <coughs> exciting and we're uh, we're gearing up for that come in 2021 and then uh, again, Bob, I want you to yeah, I want to talk about the partnership with Center State Bank. Uh, again, they've they've partnered with us at the SBDC to provide the the profit mastery training, but they've also partnered with CCTI to pro provide the Ice House yes. Entrepreneurship Training at the Blackburn Center uh, in a program that we call Partners in Prosperity. Yes. And Clifton, uh, again, you're going to teach that for us, and that is actually. The, the flyers out there, Bob, I mean, we're, we're looking to fill the class now and uh, could start as early as early January. Yes. Okay. Uh, and that's a free one as well. And you can sign up for that through our website at irscbiz.com. Look up Partners in Prosperity and go ahead and reserve your spot in there before they fill up. Right. So Clifton, tell us again, give us a little, you know, oversight of the, the Ice House Entrepreneurship Training Program. I mean, this really is for someone who, you know, really doesn't understand that entrepreneurship can really be their opportunity to, to kind of get out of a, a tough situation. Well, the Ice House is a, is a very good, it's, it's, it's a book. It was written as it's a story, uh, and it's a, a real life story about an individual in, in Alabama who didn't have many opportunities. Uh, but what he did is he took it uh, upon himself to not follow the usual path. He created his own path and created his own business and created his own opportunity. Right. So there, and then and, and as a part of this course, there are several uh, entrepreneurs within the program that we really take a good look at and look at the skill sets that they used. Uh, and how they develop their businesses, and how they develop themselves, and how they decided to make different choices than following the crowd. Yeah, I, and I love your word choices because uh, it's. Uh, I think chapter one is about choices. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's. You know, and I, I tell my students all the time. You know, you. You know, that's the one thing you have complete control over are your choices. I mean, how much time do I spend on my schoolwork? versus how much time do I spend watching TV or or you know kind of kind of goofing off I mean those are choices who who do I who do I who am I going to hang out with who am I going to run with uh, you know uh, so so that's that is a powerful message in this whole training is that you really control the choices you are in control You're exactly yeah. right yeah um, and it, it is it's uh, it's called the eight life lessons for the unlikely entrepreneur. So it really is a program designed for folks that that just never saw themselves as as entrepreneurs. Uh, and and Clifton has now taught multiple series, so you really can you really can lead people through this curriculum. And it's a great program. I, I really enjoy it. Uh, and you can see the transformation in the people from the beginning to the end. Right. A definite change. A change in, in thinking and yeah. philosophy. You know, not too long ago, Clifton, we, um, I got a phone call one day in the office, and it was from one of the former inmates who had taken your class. And, I, you know, it just, uh, it really was a, it was a great call because he called because he wanted that, that certification that he had earned because he was getting a job mm -hmm. and he needed that certification. And so I said, 
don't move. We'll we'll get this. We'll figure this out right now. I got Connie on the phone, and she she got him his certification uh, sent to him immediately. But I mean, there's an individual who who absolutely you know saw the value in the program, participated, and got the certification and got a job. He got a job. Yeah. Matter of fact, he called me just recently uh, and, and talked about the job that he has and how those things that he the things that we discuss in the class, how he gets to use them and put them to work. Right. So he was happy about that. So Clifton, again, uh, just to let everyone know out there, small business owners and operators, listen, the SBDC stands ready. Uh, we don't have all the answers, but you know what? Uh, it's someone to call and have a conversation with when you're talking about trying to, where are we headed? How do we get ready for 2021? Uh, we've got specialists within that group, digital media specialist, HR specialist. Clifton is one of our accounting and finance specialists. If you're looking to, I was talking to uh, a representative from Florida First Capital today. She was talking about refinancing some debt at a company. So maybe it's time to look at those kind of issues, Clifton. And, and you're, you're, you're around and ready to, to, to meet with, with clients on a daily basis, right? Definitely, definitely. Okay. And Bob, CCTI is is back up and running. Uh, January one, uh, the college is closed. It doesn't necessarily mean they couldn't get to you, but but no classes at least for the next two weeks. Not for the next two weeks. Uh, we will begin our open enrollment classes uh, again in January. Social media marketing bundle. We've got three classes uh, starting on January twenty fifth that are going to meet on Monday evenings from six to nine p.m. You can sign up for one or all three of those. So if you've got an employee who uh, handles your social media, send them out for a little bit of training. Our photography classes are going to start. <clears throat> We've moved them all to Fort Pierce, the main campus now. January 25th, we'll start our new series of beginning and intermediate photography classes. And uh, also some computer workshops coming up. Uh, where we teach you the basics of Microsoft Office, and then we, d we jump into Excel. We have basics to intermediate and advanced there. They'll be starting in February. And then, of course, the Marine Training Program will start February 1st. Uh, okay. That's five weeks. That meets Monday and Wednesday nights from 5.30 to 10.30. All right. Hands-on training. Uh, I appreciate, Clifton, all that you've done for us. Bob, I appreciate everything you do every day for the business community. And uh, you can always find out more at that irscbiz.com site. And with that, we're going to bring to close this uh, segment of Small Biz Florida and wish everyone a very peaceful, restful uh, holiday and hopefully a prosperous uh, new year. You've been listening to Small Biz Florida right here on WPSL, Port St. Lucie, the talk of the Treasure Coast and WSTU, Martin County's Heritage Station, serving Martin County and the Treasure Coast since 1954.